Shalom, Rabbi Yehuda Glick, Shalom Jerusalem Foundation. And today we are beginning the next part of the book of Genesis, the story of the flood. It's going to be with us for several chapters, chapter 6, chapter 7, chapter 8, and we will be continuing with Noah and his family in chapter 9 and 10 as well. Today, I want to read the first verses that discuss the story of the flood, the causes of the flood. The moment in creation where God regrets creating mankind. The moment in creation where God is referred to as somebody who is said. His heart was saddened. The God of the, of the Bible is very humane in the descriptions. He has feelings. And here he is described as somebody who is saddened. His heart is saddened. Let's read the verses. We are in Genesis chapter 6 in the daily chapter 929. We are in chapter 6. We have another 923 chapters ahead of us. We have five, we've already concluded. <clears throat> when men began to increase on the earth, and daughters were born, born to them. Well, of course, when men were born and women were born, males were born and females were born, so that's no surprise. But the surprise happens in verse 2. And the children of God saw the daughters of man that they were beautiful. And they took them for themselves wives from whatever they had chosen. That is what the first says. The men, children of gods, took for themselves the daughters of men, whatever they chose for themselves. Well, I mean, what's wrong with that? Men and women get married, and that's only natural. But the description here is something which sounds not exactly like that. First of all, who are the children of God? Did God create some kind of middle level between man and God? According to the description in chapter 1, and also in chapter 5 we did yesterday, as a matter of fact in chapter 2 as well, man was created by God with the image of God. God blows into him his soul, his godly soul. So man, every man has a godly part in him. So what are the children of gods? And what are the daughters of men? It seems that there is no middle level but we see that many of the commentators were trying to explain what it means. Was it referring to angels? Was it referring to children of leaders, of judges, of kings? I think that the Torah is talking in the perspective of those people. They referred to themselves as children of God. We see it. In various high societies. It was also in children and kings, leaderships. We see in Avimelech and Pharaoh who takes Sarah. We see Achashverosh, the king of the, of, the, of the book of Esther, who asks for all the beautiful girls. So the chasing after beautiful girls is one thing. But the chasing after beautiful girls referring to yourself as the children of God's and to those girls as daughters of men. Here we're beginning to see some kind of world without limitations. When God looked at the world and He saw that everything was good, the good was the objective good. When, when Ha'iv saw the fruit of the tree and she took it, she saw that it was good for her. Here too, when these men, the children of God in their own eyes, saw the daughters of men and 
decided they were beautiful for them. They had no personality on their own. They are here to serve them. That is one level. But beyond that, God says, verse 5, he sees how the man's wickedness on earth and how very men, every man plan devised by his mind was nothing but evil at the time. And Hashem regretted that it made men and his heart was saddened. God's heart was saddened not only because men took women. We saw that in chapter 2, God created man. Or in chapter 3, God told, God created a woman and he said he wants them to be together. He wants them to clung to each other almost to the level like where man clung to God. But what the Torah describes here is when God created couplehood, man and woman, togetherness, family, the first human community. Here we see that the concept of taking these women were for the sexual status only. The concept, the value of family was the one that was at stake in these chapters. The so important value that God created humanity based on, and God tries to tell us to teach the world, family, 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 this was destroyed. The whole idea of a couple being together, whether it's according to chapter 1 and chapter 5, where they were both created, mankind was created of man and woman, intimacy in a level that only man and women can have, no, no animals, it never says that a man, that an animal knows a female. Only a man can know a wife. The, the, the intimacy of the highest level possible. The holiness of a family. In chapter 6, it is in a situation of collapsing. Noah had a wife and three children. Noah had a family. God refers to Noah as a leader and God tells Noah you are going to go build the ark but this kind of humanity who destroys the concept of family has no hope whatsoever when women are referred to only as vessels as instruments to serve those who in their own eyes are children of God then there is no other choice but to begin the whole thing from again, from the beginning. There is no choice but to flood the whole world. And this is what God says. The only concept of creation of the world was creating a man who was created in the image of God, bringing about to the world descendants who call out in the name of God. This is done through the concept of the value of family. Once again today, we're living in a time where the value of family, of husband and wife, of man and woman, is at stake. And we are called upon by God to once again be careful and to strengthen the concept of family and to call out to the world say that God rests inside a family. When there is love and trust between husband and wife, when there is true couplehood, when the concept of family is so strong, then God can rest in that house. When it's not, there's no other choice but to bring a flood. It's our mission today, our assignment is to call out and strengthen the concept of family, to bring about the word of God to humanity. And let's hope we can once again return to living with love between husbands and wives, between families, and feeling the presence of God in our families. Shalom! From Jerusalem, Yehuda Glick.